We are excited to announce that this week's sponsor is Corda Candles, some of our favorite candles. And we are huge fans at Abiding Together Podcast of Corda Candles. We even commissioned this one last year called Cloistered Heart. It was inspired by St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, our Lenten book study. And it just smells so fresh and so clean. It's got notes of cherry and violet in it. And the people at Corda Candles and Anna and the team were so gracious. They actually gave 15% of this candle sale back to my religious community. So I just wanted to say first and foremost, thank you so much for your generosity. It's been a, a really a wonderful help for our community and all of your donations. But a candle is a great gift, as you know. And as we head into the holidays, if you're looking for a go-to gift, Corda Candles is a way to share the faith, but in a beautiful and subtle way. We think they're perfect for just about anyone because they lead with beauty and they share the gospel in a modern and meaningful way. The Corda team handcrafts each candle, including custom blending the scents, which are directly inspired by saints and the faith. Something that really sets these candles apart is that they actually burn the candle, and as you smell them, the unique scent gives you a concrete, kind of tangible connection to different saints. And one thing I love about the candles is that they're they're beautifully fragranced, but they're not overwhelming, and there's nothing artificial in them. So you can be assured that as it illumines your room, it illumines your heart, and illumines your soul as well. It's just absolutely lovely. They create a beautiful, peaceful atmosphere for prayer. And it's amazing, as you know very well, just lighting a candle, what a difference that makes um, for your prayer time, but also in your room whenever sacred space and just your living room as you gather together as a family. The candles as Catholics are such an important part of our faith. And so we're delighted to, to help promote Corda Candles as well. Corda Candles has these beautiful jar candles, but there's also tea light samplers as well. So you can custom pick six different mini candles to try out and to figure out which scents that you love. It's an easy way to try a lot of scents before buying the bigger candles. Something else that we also love about Corda Candles is all the great ingredients that they use and they're all natural coconut wax blend and clean burning fragrance. These are some, some of my favorites, Alpine Ascent and Roses in Winter. They're all really lovely. I, I really can't choose a favorite one. They're just so outstanding. So you can learn more about Corda and check out all the candles at Corda Candles, C-O-R-D-A, candles.com. That's CordaCandles.com. God bless you all. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Abiding Together podcast. Uh, as you can see, for those of you who are watching, we are actually together and we're going to continue our series on daughterhood yeah mm -hmm. in full disclosure it's after lunch we've had a lot of spinach so we're not really sure what's gonna, <laughs> what's going to happen there's a couple puff pies over here yeah. yeah and there were some little hands earlier which may make an appearance later in the <laughs> yeah we're a little slap happy yeah we saying. are a little slap happy so. it's true it's true but we are um delighted to be back uh together here again and we're going to uh continue our four-part series on our identity as daughter so we're going to start once again with the same scripture passage that we had in part one because we're going to spend the entire time as a daughter just diving into this particular scripture and once again this is saint paul's letter to the ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to 21 and saint paul says for this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. So we were talking on the first episode yeah. about how uh, the received identity is daughter. We talked about trust and receiving. And we talked about being the delight of the Trinity. And so now we're going to talk this week about needs of a daughter. What are our core needs? And so for many people, they might be like, well, I don't have any needs. Like, what do you mean? So what do you think about that as we kind of just continue to un kind of unveil these areas of our hearts and delve into these places? Michelle, what for you, when we talk about core needs of a daughter, what are some things that come to your heart? I think that one of the core needs for a daughter is really like what we were talking about last episode is these are things that we need when we are young, when mm -hmm. we are infants and mm -hmm. when we are growing. And it was really to be seen and to be known and to be loved. Yes. But this is where our security comes from. Mm -hmm. This is where our safety comes from. This is where our ability to be able to verbalize what we need. Yes. I don't know about y'all, but 
I mean, I'm in my 40s. I think I'm just now learning how to really verbalize what do I need. You Didn't know? I say that to you? I was like, yeah. you're so good at letting us know what you need. Like yeah. this morning, I was like, wow, this is like a notable difference yes. that I've seen in you. Yeah. I kind of feel like that scene from The Notebook when Noah's asking Allie, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, but my family and you yeah. to forget about it. What do you want? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think that's how the majority of us <laughs> grow up. Like sometimes our, yeah. like our needs are put on. I think we think if we have needs that we're being needy. Yes. And that we don't want to be needy. And I think that realizing part of um, maturation and part of growing up to realize that our needs are okay. Mm -hmm. You know, these are all right, but they have to be verbalized and vocalized in a certain way, you mm -hmm. know, and they have to be identified in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Like, what do I need? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, Sister Miriam and I went to go see this beautiful Catholic doctor, mm -hmm. Dr. Tom, and he does beautiful work called actualizing. Is that how I call Activation. it? Activation. Activation. Mm -hmm. Really just feeling trauma from your body and how your body works and different mm -hmm. things like learning that. Learning how to breathe through your learning, belly. Mm -hmm. Learning how to breathe, like mm -hmm. a lot of Ruha. I didn't mm -hmm. know how to breathe deep down. <laughs> and so, but the first question mm -hmm. that he asked me is, said something like Christ like when is the last time you felt well hmm. where your body felt well like where you felt well yeah. and I teared up right away surprise surprise but and I said I don't remember mm -hmm. I don't remember the last time like I fully like my body fully felt well or there wasn't something going on or where there were emotionally physically spiritually you know and it's not but I don't walk around saying oh yeah. mm -hmm. it was me but it's just mm -hmm. I and it was such a shocking statement being like I can't remember mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. goes back to daughter people goes yeah. back to daughter yeah. what about you Heather yeah I think that's a good example of how we um, often like go through life is that we don't even realize how many deficits we just get used to living with like we just yep. we cope we learn to live with it that way and sometimes we feel like we might even believe that that's normal mm -hmm. that this is what living is is going to feel like until you have someone who can speak the truth and you go oh I didn't know that, that I shouldn't have chronic pain and that I shouldn't wake up tired all the time or, you know, like you just get used, that's your normal. Mm -hmm. I think it applies like to just everything else in our life. We can get used to going through life, living as an orphan and not really knowing at our core that we are a beloved daughter who is seen, known and loved. And, you know, when I think about little toddlers, when my kids were little, they get in that phase where they start to walk away from you and they'll always look back yeah. and they needed that assurance. And I remember just naturally what would come out is, I see you. You're okay. Mm -hmm. You're okay. And you just yep. keep saying, you're okay. And then they go a little bit further and they turn around and make sure that you're still there. And I think that's part of the like them asking those questions in a sense, deep in their heart is just coming out. Do you see me? Am I okay? Are you going to be here for mm -hmm. me? And, um, and I think for many of us on a deep level, we don't know that. Mm -hmm. Like that is, there's places that are missing there. Even if we had great parents, like Sometimes when we talk about the past, it can seem like we're throwing our parents under the bus, no, you know, no, but it doesn't yeah. have to be that way. It can just no. be like, you know, they weren't always around. They're mm -hmm. not perfect. Or mm -hmm. it might have been other people that these experiences that we've had, there's messages that we've picked up along the way. Maybe it's a misinterpretation of Absolutely. something yes. when we were young that wasn't reality, but it is, it became our reality mm -hmm. because of how we interpreted a situation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when I think about that, I'm like, wow, it's so important that that we bring this, this core need that all of us have to be seen, known, and loved. And, mm -hmm. and again, like we were talking about last time, we need to ask the questions. Yeah. It, do I know this mm -hmm. deep in the core of my being mm -hmm. that I am seen, known, and loved by God? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think, sister? Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate what we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier is that we, as adults, I think a lot of times we don't, we don't really know what our needs are, but we're afraid of being needy. And I think that label is one of the most fearsome things you can be labeled with like oh, oh my gosh she's so needy yeah or you know and we're like yeah. oh and we'll do anything but admit we're needy but the, the the real heart of that issue is that children are needy mm -hmm. they they are like they, they literally needs, cannot yes. cook dinner <laughs> they cannot change their own diaper Reach. yeah they can't feed themselves they are they are the epitome of need mm -hmm. and all of us have these little places inside where we have a deep need of somebody to come and care for us. Mm -hmm. And and ideally what happens in our hearts is when our parents meet those needs, or even when they haven't, with the Lord and with healing and understanding, as we get to be adults, we can express what we need without putting the expectation on that you better fulfill all my needs, you better do it right now. And mm -hmm. it's up to you to make my life better, mm -hmm. which is that that's where we can, I think all of us, when Amen. we have those parts of our hearts that we feel toward other people, and then when we feel people coming with those parts toward us, that's why it makes us like, ooh, like, and we feel that's so ugly, but under underneath the side is a little girl or a little boy for a man who's 
who wants to be seen and who wants to be mm-hmm. tended to and cared for. And I think when we can understand what's happening at the deeper levels, that's when we can stop at that moment and say, versus, you know, pushing that side of our heart or exiling that part of our heart and saying, oh, that's disgusting, get away from mm-hmm. me, because it'll just come out another way. Oh, yes. But just to stop in that place and say, okay, Jesus, what what's happening here and what am I really looking for? And and to be to be loved and to be seen and to be cherished is a good and holy <clears throat> desire. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, mm-hmm. that's heaven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We will be cherished and known and seen and loved forever. And mm-hmm. of course we would ache for that. Of course God would build that into the foundational unit of the family. Where like we were talking earlier, how when you had children, you just, you hold them and they just poop and they cry and you love them. And like they, <laughs> oh yeah, you know, and, and you love them. And so I think that reality we're so afraid of. So I think helping us understand that what what are we asking of other people? What are our expectations? And also what are our authentic needs and that we need other people, that we need people to show up for us and just kind of helping us understand what's what's happening at the deeper level because we all need that. Mm-hmm. We, we all, that's part mm-hmm. of being a human, you know? Yeah. When I think about myself and like when I am in need of something, mm-hmm. I have a really hard time asking it's people hard, for something. It? Yes. It's so hard. It hard it be One, because yeah. I'm super, oh. you know, self-reliant or whatever, yeah. but it's also because I don't want anybody to feel obligated. I don't want to put anybody out. Yes. It's like the worst feeling of like, I, I just want you to do it if you want to do it. But if I ask you, then yeah. I feel like you're only going to say yes mm-hmm. because I'm asking you. Mm-hmm, and I mm-hmm. I have this deep thing around, like, I just don't want to be a burden mm-hmm, to anybody yes. at all. And I'm sure that has a root somewhere. I haven't gone there yet. But yes, yeah. but that's a really hard thing for me. And then also, I think when I open myself up to someone else, then I risk being disappointed. Mm-hmm. And that's also really hard for me. Like, I hate the feeling of being disappointed. Mm-hmm. And so um, if my expectation is that someone would love me in a certain way, or not my expectation, but more like my desire. Yeah. Yes. And it's not met in that way. The disappointment can really bring me like pretty low. Yes. And I think that that's what you're saying, sister, is sometimes like we have natural needs that are important that we should bring to each other. Yes. We are made for community and we are made to be in communion with each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, like holding both of those carefully together. Yeah. God is the only one yes. who can really come through for us mm-hmm. in a perfect way. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, it's like, how, how do we experience fear again coming in to even disrupt, like how we ask for love yeah. or mm-hmm. need to be loved, express our need to be loved. Yeah. yeah. Which is so risky, isn't it? Like oh you said, gosh. oh gosh, it's yeah, so, scary. it is because we've all had experiences also where that has been pushed back in our face and saying, well, you need to get yourself together. And you're like, yeah, I'll just be over here. <laughs> like, never mind, never mind. You yeah. know, it's at that moment when all these agreements and vows, I will never. And like, oh, that's so, yeah, it's so, it's very, it's a holy ground. Yeah. And I think too, like it's, if I were to think about my husband and if he said to me, Heather, this is how I need to be loved right now. I'd be like, oh my gosh, yes. totally. Yes. Because my heart loves, I already love him before he asks. So yeah, if he absolutely. tells me, I'm like, that's a gift to me actually, because then I can love you in the way that you need. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, and when I put it back on myself, I'm like, no, I shouldn't ask for what I need. Yeah. Because if you don't ever already know how to do that or want to do that, yes. then it's somehow like not true. Okay. So yes. you know that yeah. song? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's Bonnie Wright. Are we going to sing this the, rest of the day now? Are you going to do this to us? Is this what's going to happen? <laughs> this you is going to be karaoke time. You, yeah, if you can. Yeah, are you going to sing no, it? Yeah. No. No. Why? Don't. Don't. Do has a really good voice. No, yeah. you know you can't make me. Love me. <laughs> I can't make. You I can't lo- make you love me if you don't. You know that song. I'm yeah. like, oh yes, I love this song. And for some reason, I've heard this actually it. from like. She loves it, but she doesn't sing it for. <laughs> you guys are terrible. Me, you love me. This is so not fair. You don't. <laughs> See, sisters, you can't people. make your heart feel something. <laughs> something it won't. It won't. That's yeah. exactly yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It and strangely, finish. I've actually heard several women say that's one of their favorite songs. I think there's something about that of yeah. like, I don't want to force you to love me. I just want you to love me. Like, yeah. I want you to, and that's part of seeing someone is yeah. like that you know that they see you for who you are. Mm-hmm. And, in the glory parts and in the really horrible parts. And yeah. they love you anyway, that there's nothing um, that can change their love for you. And yeah. So anyway, those are the things that for me personally, they get tangled up in that dynamic yeah. and and the lack of trust that I see within myself mm-hmm. to receive love. Oh, that's yeah. so good. Mm-hmm. But there is, okay, something about that Bonnie Raitt song, like it does identify with a lot of women because that's a deep ache. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. that song voices yeah. a deep ache. And I think 
like if unspoken expectations mm-hmm. or anything like that just ends up becoming resentment. Yeah. Because we or just, like wanting you wanting you to read my mind. Yes. You should be able to read my you mind. You should be able which, to read my mind. I mean, yeah. well, Chris and I have that conversation all the time. Like, shouldn't you be able to read my mind by now? But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's not. But realizing, yeah. okay, real maturity and real okay, what are your like one of the things, like especially on weekends when mm. we have more time, what are our hopes and dreams for today? Mm-hmm. Like what what in your mind do you think? Or like That's even so like good. last week yeah. was my birthday. Mm-hmm. He's like, What is your hope for your birthday? Mm-hmm. How can we celebrate? Celebrate you well. Yeah. It took us 20 years to figure oh out <laughs> talking about our expectations. It it's is. really cleared up a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. No, because in good. my mind, like, because <clears throat> I love to celebrate people, like, you think you should know how to celebrate me. I shouldn't yeah. have to tell you. But not everyone works that way in yeah. realizing mm-hmm. that that's how he loves me and that's a gift for, you know, me, for him just to ask, yes. like, how can I love you better? And just yes. to ask, mm-hmm. you know. But I think there is something about, like, okay, we don't want to be a burden. Mm-hmm. You know, I think mm-hmm. we want to be. Freely loved. Yes. Mm-hmm. And freely celebrated yep. and freely whatever mm-hmm. and seen and someone notice mm-hmm. us, you mm-hmm. know, but I think there's something powerful when someone notices us, mm-hmm. the little parts of us and the big parts of us. And, but I think for us and going back to the previous episode, I think we need to give us ourselves permission to be students of ourselves. Yeah. You know, how does my heart work? What do I need? Mm-hmm. Ask ourselves the question. Because I know for me, I still can't identify some of the things I need because I've already put in uh, counterfeit needs in place of the real actual needs that mm-hmm. I need mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. I just need a break I just need to chill and watch a show mm-hmm. I just need 20 minutes by myself I need and some of those things are good but I, actually some of those other things they're not actually what I need mm-hmm. like I need a communion mm-hmm. or I need mm-hmm. like real rest and mm-hmm. I do fake rest or I yeah. need something else because I'm not in tune with my own self to know mm-hmm. you know what are your mm-hmm. thoughts sister well, that's very true and when we, I mean we talk about as a daughter being seen, known, and loved, like we're talking about attunement and connection. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about attachment later on as we go in the series. But, but when people can, you know, and like we said, like you said, nobody can pick that up all the time. I think mm-hmm. like psychologists say, even if as parents, if you do like fifty percent of the time, you're doing pretty good. Like it's just the yeah. repair. Like yeah. okay, you missed it, you repair. But it's Christ is the one who's deeply attuned to us, and and when we experience that, we experience a deep safety. And mm-hmm. we've we've talked about this before in the show. I think this has been one of my one things in the past. But it's a book called The Life Model: Amazing. Living from the Heart Jesus yes. Gave You, and it's very very good. I just kind of we just talk a bit about some of the. It talks about personal tasks of like daughterhood, and it's talking about infancy, and we're talking about the small places, mm-hmm. but. I think it might be helpful because uh, this is written by a group of Christian psychologists, and they say this. It says, um, the primary task of birth to age three is learning to receive, mm-hmm. like the primary task. And then this is, and we'll talk about this in another episode, but it says the primary resulting problem in adult life when tasks are not completed is weak or stormy relationships, mm-hmm. you know, which would make sense. Because <laughs> if I don't know how to receive me, I don't trust you. Mm-hmm. Either, either I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna need you, mm-hmm. or I'm gonna be so compulsive and obsessive, and it's gonna be tumultuous, and it's gonna be hot and cold, and like, but all that is indicative of is a broken attachment mm-hmm. at the heart. So it talks about personal tasks. There's five, um, which is like the task of a, of a child. So what is a child learning at that age? Living in joy, expands capacity for joy, learns that joy is one's normal state. Mm. Think about that for a second. Learns that joy is one's normal state, Shoot. normal state, mm-hmm. builds joy strength. Number two, develops trust. Number three, learns how to receive. Number four, begins to organize self into a person through relationships. And number five, learns to return to joy from every unpleasant emotion. Oh. Wow. <clears throat> so you just think of all the little places in our own hearts where joy is not the normal state. And we're not talking about like passing happiness, but like yeah. the contentment that rests, you know, in the Lord. And then that you can come back to the joy center. You can come back to joy islands. And as they say, like in the brain of like, okay, yes, mm-hmm. I'm feeling really sad or disgusted or angry or bitter or resentful. I can experience that what's happening there and then allow the Lord to bring me back to the joy state. And you, can you see that in children, you know, when they get overwhelmed with joy or they get in my, that's what mom does. Mom mm-hmm. is the primary regulator, especially in the first couple years of life of like, mm-hmm. look at mama. Mm-hmm. We're okay. We're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll change. You'll be just fine. You know, just the way she mm-hmm. speaks and the, the body language and the contact and, and that's what through the father too. But, um, those are some deep tasks that I don't know about you, but these are still being working on in my own life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. of course they are. Yeah, every single one, all mm-hmm. through five. Yes. You know? <laughs> 
You know? I think those are powerful ones, you mm -hmm. know, and to realize, okay, I think the joy part is huge yeah. because mm -hmm. it goes back to what we said in the previous episode about delight, mm -hmm. you know, and where, and it goes back to even like John 15, which is like the guiding scripture for this podcast. Yep. If you abide in me, it goes later mm -hmm. on in John 15, then your joy will be complete. Then my joy will be in you. And then your joy will be incomplete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I, where's my complete joy? You know, like, yeah. and it's an abiding question. Mm -hmm. And it's abiding in the Lord and it's abiding in ourselves, mm -hmm. knowing ourselves and that we're made for this communion mm -hmm. and this attachment with the Lord. And in that, it gives us this peace that surpasses all understanding. In that, it gives us this joy. But I've been really thinking about even just the state of the world and, like, you know, where we are right now, like, even, even how we're recording this. We're in September right here. And we have just gone through, the United States has just gone through everything with Afghanistan. I don't even know where we'll be in October when this airs, but mm -hmm. COVID cases are up again. There's Haiti Hurricanes, earthquake. Yeah, yeah, Hurricane Ida just happened. The Haiti earthquake just happened. Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of things ca happening. And I'm looking at the church in um, Afghanistan and I'm looking at the church in other places mm. that's really persecuted. And one of the things that people, that makes me cry is that just hearing different stories of the thing is their joy. Like like the persecuted church, a lot of the stories they tell yeah. is their joy. Yeah. And it just has totally convicted me mm -hmm. and so on so many levels. Mm -hmm. You know, is my abiding presence in the Lord, does it bear the fruit of joy? Because joy is a fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, so if Spirit, I'm, yeah. yeah, it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So if I do not have that abiding presence in the Lord or in myself, you know, am I bearing the fruits of the spirit of joy? Mm -hmm. And if I'm not, like, that means my root system's off somewhere, shape mm -hmm. or form. You know, and it's looking at that and asking those questions mm -hmm. of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I think the reflection on are the fruits of the spirit fragrant in my life yeah. is like, Amen, a, girl. that was my reflection before going to confession the other day. Yeah. I was just like, where am I not seeing the fruits of the spirit? And then I just, that's the, the Girl, trail that I went one. down, yeah. I was like, if I don't have joy, why? What is at the root of that? You know, yeah. and I just kept going, and that that's what I brought to confession. Because I think, you know, it's one thing to say, well, I go to church and I do all these good things, or I'm holy, or I'm whatever. It's like, if you don't have the fragrance of the fruits of the Spirit all yes. over your life, well, there's something to be questioned there, yeah, you know, like so for yourself, like, yeah. and with your spiritual director, like, you really should ask those questions. Like, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful question to mm -hmm. ask. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think... There are places inevitably that all of us have where there's gaps, like mm -hmm. there's gaps in our in our growing, gaps mm -hmm. in relationships, wounds, like all of that stuff. But God is the one who fills the gaps. Mm -hmm. He really is. I think for so long in my relationship with him, or just maybe it wasn't that close of a relationship, you know, growing up, I've always been Catholic. We studied at Franciscan University, like theology, like who cares? But in the sense of like, we've we been around, like, cares. <laughs> I just mean like, we've heard a lot of things, yes, absolutely. but for some reason, like it really didn't hit me hard that God is a restorer yeah. here and now. Mm -hmm. And it was always like this sense of, I have to wait until heaven. Like, these are the things I'm just going to have to deal with these mm -hmm. shattered parts of my heart that, that are so sorrowful or these tapes in my head of lies. Like I'm just, this is the battle and this is the cross. And although that's partly true, yeah. you know, that we are called to carry our cross and there is a battle, sure. but that God really can restore us now. Mm -hmm. So as we talk about this specifically and yes. like the seen, known and loved parts where there's gaps there to just like find peace and hope that God is a restorer. Like that's been one of the most comforting things mm -hmm. for me. Like, wouldn't you say oh, like in yes. your own life, if you it, like, as you've experienced that? Oh, definitely. Because I mean, to whom shall we go? Mm -hmm. really? Because like we said, ultimately, Nobody, we're created for community and relationship, but but nobody can totally see us, know us, and love us in mm -hmm. every facet. And the best of human love is a, a revelation of the deep love of God. It's an invitation to mm -hmm. like the deeper levels. And I think it's so easy for us in in the gaps to to make agreements with where the enemy is coming, mm -hmm. to speak lies about us. See, nobody likes you. Nobody ever sees you. See, nobody ever. And, and we're so used to those things. Like we agree with them without mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. It's like the tape that goes on in the back of our heads. That we're like, oh, like, mm -hmm. like it's, you know, oh, this is happening. You know, like we were staying in an Airbnb and upstairs is really hot and downstairs is cold. And mm -hmm. you just like, you stay upstairs and you think it's hot. And then you walk down and you're like, oh, life could be different. Like, <laughs> yes. like downstairs is 40 degrees colder than upstairs. Like call Amen. the owner of the Airbnb. But you know what I mean? It's like, yes, yeah. but we live upstairs and we don't ever go downstairs to think maybe there's a different way yeah. of life. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's a good exactly. analogy with our Airbnb well, girl. You know, we're yeah. trying to get some AC on us. Hashtag yeah. first world problems, people. All right. So, so maybe if we could talk a bit about 
learning to receive, like to be seen, known, and love. And so what are what are the things as daughters? So if you're listening to this and you're saying to yourself, we might have some ideas of maybe where these areas of being seen, known, and love have not been met, or how are we trying to compensate mm-hmm. for them? Or like what's, mm-hmm. you know, to help the Holy Spirit enlighten our hearts. It talks about in this book also, so the personal tasks, but it talks about the community tasks. And what we'll, in another episode, we'll talk about when the tasks fail. So what are the community and family tasks for children and for us as daughters? So parents delight in the infant's wonderful and unique existence. Mm-hmm. Parents delight in the unique and wonderful existence. Parents build strong, loving bonds with the infant, bonds of unconditional love. Mm-hmm. Gives care that matches the infant's needs without the infant asking. So that there's the yeah, that's, that's proper tough. to infants because yeah. infants cannot verbalize. Mm-hmm. I'm highly uncomfortable right now. Can you please change my diaper? Like mm-hmm. they're they're crying. That's the way yeah. they're saying it. But you have to anticipate their needs. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when we don't get that, of course, we're going to expect everybody else to yeah. to do that for us. Yeah. Um, discovers the true characteristics of the infant's unique identity through attention to the child's behavior and character, so attunement, and provides, and this is, this is gorgeous, provides enough safety and companionship during difficulties so the infant can return to joy from any other emotion. Mm-hmm. So it's the, the being there with, it's the, the needing, the seeing, and the knowing, mm-hmm. which gives the child safety enough to say, okay, this is a passing emotion, and I can go back to the true state of who I am, which is eternal, right? Because mm-hmm. the eternal is joy. Like sorrow and despair, those things are temporary, like we experience them now, but that's not present in heaven. Yes. And what is eternal is what's most true. Mm-hmm. So, it's not, so it's not denying that. It's the, it's the Paschal mm-hmm. mystery. But the return to the state of when I experience my life places where I'm not seen, known, and loved, where, where am I going with those? Like what am I doing oh, with yeah. them? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that goes back to being a student of yourself, yes. saying like mm-hmm. constantly asking those questions because you take those questions and have a holy curiosity about it. Like, why am I reacting these way? Yes. Why am I, you know, mm-hmm. like, I mean, a funny incident is like I've tried to really like alter as I'm trying to do my physical health really well, like eat gluten free, like eat all these kind of things. So I have like certain food and it's separated from our family's food, you know, and I have all these boys. Mm-hmm. And so I made these like gluten free little pizza things and whatever. And I l- set them out, you know, for them to cool off. And I went in another room. I came back and they're all gone. <laughs> you would have thought somebody had murdered someone in my house. <laughs> How mad I was. I mean, and my reaction did not meet the situation. Mm-hmm. And my first thought went to, oh my gosh, no one appreciates anything I did. Like, oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Like, this is the one thing I have. They can eat everything else in this mm-hmm. house. I mean, like, I mean, when I tell you, Oh my gosh, my reaction was like some yeah, yeah. it was totally over the top. Mm-hmm. But there was something it put a finger on something so mm-hmm. like someone they don't see me. Mm-hmm. That's what's basically they yes. do not see me. That yeah. I do all the and it hit something really core in me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, or and I'm just gonna keep taking. They're just me. gonna keep mm-hmm. taking. That's it. Mm-hmm. Just keep taking. And it was something that I really had to look at. I'm like, because mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. You know, this is not meeting the situation. So what is that? Like, what are these things? But I noticed after I realized that my reaction was really, really strong. Mm-hmm. Instead of treating myself with shame, like, oh, my gosh, get over yourself. Like, or like, you, yeah, you know. The way you used to talk to yourself. Yes. Yeah. It was like I stopped, and then that's when I was really tender with myself. All right, what's going on? Yeah. All right, what is this that is, like, this hit a core nerve mm-hmm. or a core need? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Yeah. And it hit something that I needed to look at. Yeah. So, you know, Holy Spirit, come into this mm-hmm. moment you know, search me. And it was, it's like, I felt unseen and I felt taken advantage of, you mm-hmm. know, and then mm-hmm. it brought up another memory from my past. And so it's those kind of things, mm-hmm. you know, but usually I would have just pushed it aside mm-hmm. and just kept on going. Mm-hmm. Like, let's move. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a few reasons why we're talking about this. I think most of us can get into just, we're reacting and responding mm-hmm. to what life throws at us. And we often don't know why we react and respond. Like you're, you're pausing now. I've learned to pause. We yeah. all have been learning to pause and ask ourselves those questions. So why do we do that? And mm-hmm. I, I think one of the big reasons is maturity. And we talked about this at the first episode of this oh, yeah. season is like, there should be a process of growing in maturity, mm-hmm. you know, to be rooted in love, yeah. to be, yeah. to grow deeply into these areas. And if we're just constantly responding and reacting and we never pause long enough to say, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. Or what is it that I really need yes. here? 
then we will just continue cycles Mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And I think for me, the more that I've allowed myself to heal, the better I'm able to love others. Because when I'm receiving and I'm being filled with the love of God, when I, when I experience him, and it's not that I do this perfectly, not at all, but, but there are times when I feel like I'm putting myself literally in the presence of God to be seen by him, to be healed by his gaze, you know, that, that is my intention. I'm like, God, just heal me. And I think, you know, then I'm able to love better when I receive that way. And you stop certain cycles from happening within your family or within your community, within your circle of influence. And so for my kids, I feel like there's moments where God has taught me how to love them well, Mm -hmm. you know, by like stopping or they've cued me as to what they need. And then I've realized, oh my gosh, this is so important. So like when my daughter Maria was three years old and she's standing in front of this full length mirror, I've told you guys this story before, and she's spinning in her little dress and she's like, mom, look, 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 look. I'm like, and I was packing. So I was like, kind of glance. I'm like, oh yeah, cool. You know, (laughs) she's like, I keep going. She's like, no mom, look. And I kind of glance up again. I'm like, oh, that's pretty Maria not enough for her. She's like, mom, look at me. And so I had to stop what I was doing. And I looked at her and I let her know, I see you, Maria. Mm -hmm. And she's spinning around and it's like flaring out, which every little girl loves. And I was just like, I see you, Maria. Like, you're so beautiful. And she just like lit right up. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, one, when did we stop? spinning around in front of mirrors and delighting in ourselves. But secondly, that we would invite someone to delight in something in us or that we're delighting in, you know? And I was like, it's important that we stop, you know, as parents, but just as people, like as we care about people, like it's important that I stop and listen to your heart, sister, listen to you, you Mm -hmm. know, that I'm able to love you, to anticipate your needs. And the only way that I can grow in that is to mature in these areas myself. It's impossible to give that unless it's been poured into you. And when there's not people to pour it in in the way that you need, Like, this is where God the Father, he's a person. Like, Jesus is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. They want to come and fill in all of those gaps for us. It's not an imaginary story. We're telling ourselves. This is the difference between a self-help book and what we're talking about. It's like you can tell yourself positive, you know, thoughts, whatever. That's completely different than the truth of God being spoken into the deep places of your heart where you Mm -hmm. need it the most. That's what transforms. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just Mm -hmm. like, it's not just a mindset change. Like, Mm -hmm. it's a transformation that occurs that I think is very deep and real. Oh, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's good. Mm-hmm. Oh, so much wisdom there, and and that's really the the root. We talk about affirmation; it's making us firm mm-hmm. in the truth of who we are. And I think that is the beautiful thing that is not just telling yourself nice things, but it's allowing that transformation to take place and to be able to to respond and mm-hmm. to notice the needs that we have mm-hmm. and to recognize the beauty of them. And I think I think that can almost be more difficult. I think one of the hardest things about say when somebody does disappoint us so they don't see us, or you're talking to somebody and they're totally not paying attention. And, and you just after a while you're just like oh forget it you know like those places of our heart is to make agreements or to say I don't need anybody anyway but to sit in the ache of like I really want to be seen mm-hmm. like I really mm-hmm. I really wanted somebody to know that to be mm-hmm. with me there mm-hmm. and like maybe the person that you're with that doesn't have the capacity to mm-hmm. do that mm-hmm. but just to be like Lord I I want to be seen here mm-hmm. like can you mm-hmm. Can you speak? And that that's a beautiful thing. And I think, I know for my own life, I like pushed that away for so long. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, but that's beautiful. That's eternal. And yeah. like the Lord delights to do that. And and then at times, like, you know, if we do have to say to people, like, look, I, can you just listen? Like, I really need, like, I just need you to be here with me. Like, <laughs> you know, just you. like, just, just be present. I don't need you to fix it. I just need you to hear my heart, you know? Yeah. And I, and people that love us, we're like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm so sorry. Like, or how can I be present to you? Like, mm-hmm. how can I love you? And and I think those realities of that's what gives us the safety and security, like we're saying, to be able to attend to others. And mm-hmm. I think I, well, we've talked about this, but I think in our own personal journeys, I know for myself, like as I've grown as a person, I can see the behavior of the people at times. I'm like, oh, oh, she just wants to be seen. Mm-hmm. Like that's why she's doing it. It's not like anything about me personally. Yes. And I don't have to yes. freak out about it or like, I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. okay. It, it might be a way that's camouflaged, but you're like, oh, you recognize the core need. Oh, they, they just want to be loved. Mm-hmm. Like they just want to be affirmed here. And mm-hmm. all I need to do is just sit and receive. I don't have to fix it. I don't have to, I just, you know, like, I, you mm-hmm. know, nobody needs my unsolicited advice. I just need to sit here. So I think that's the restoration of like, you talk about the Christ, the one who attends, Christ the yes. attender. Yes. And just how present and just how mm. attentive he is. And he's not he's not put off by people's fig leaves. Mm-mm. And that it's his love that roots people and grounds them in the love of the Father. And and that's what the work of Christ is all about within each of one of us at this very moment, mm-hmm. you know. 
Oh, that's so good. And it's Christ the attender and Holy Spirit the yeah. comforter coming yes. in and just realizing all of that. And I think for us, like you said, it's the more that we um, realize that within ourselves, the yeah. more than we can give it to other people. Yeah. You know, more we are attuned to our own hearts yes. than we can tune to others. We had a situation this summer where we went back to the Life Team Camp Cope Crest where we ran Cope Crest for 10 years and it was beautiful and amazing up in the mm. North Georgia mountains. Well, my children have not been back in over five years, like fully back. And, you know, this is like very formative times mm. yeah. of their lives and all this kind of stuff. So we get there where they are the first night. This is the first time that we've been back in a while. So it's during dinner time at camp and all these people are coming up to us mm -hmm. and it's a little overwhelming, like just being in that situation again, one, just being around that many people again, like yeah. after COVID. But yeah. so we're there and <clears throat> my, our two youngest were with my husband and I, um, while we were there. And so my daughter, Lily is there and we're at the dinner table and all these people are coming to us and I'm looking over at, at Lily and she is just tears mm -hmm. and I'm looking at her and I'm just like, and this is my first thought. I wouldn't lean over and say, Lil, what's going on? Honey, pull yourself together. Oh. That's what I was going to say. Pull yourself together, and we can talk about this later. Mm -hmm. You know, it, because that's what I do. Pull mm -hmm. yourself together, and mm -hmm. we'll figure this out later, yeah. which I usually don't ever go figure it out later. Sure. But, put, you know, yeah. put yourself, so girl, put your yeah. stuff so together. True. Put your lipstick on and move yeah. on. You know, and then it was just like, no. Mm -hmm. And so, and all these people wanted to talk to us and, all, you know, and come up. And so I just looked at her and said, Lil. Let's go. And I excused ourselves from the table. I went, and she and I went for a walk. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lily, what's going on? You know, and she just totally broke down. Like, she missed this place. Yeah. She missed the life at, you know, being around all the campers she missed. Mm -hmm. And so she was expressing what she missed. And I was like, well, what exactly? She's like, I want to move back to Cove Crest. Yeah. And I want to be like, no, you really don't. But honey, but <laughs> and, and so I was like, why? And so I asked, why? Mm -hmm. I just do. I'm like, no. And I was thinking, I said, Lily, can you name the ache that's going on in your yeah. heart? What is it that's going on in your heart? What do you miss? Mm -hmm. I said, can you name it? Mm -hmm. And it was such a pivotal moment in myself and her because I was attuning to her heart because I had been attuning to my own. Yes. And she said, I miss living in tight community where everyone lives next door to each other and we mm -hmm. all know each other really well. Yeah. And I said, okay. I said, well, we yeah, have community know. where we are. But she said, but we don't live next door to each other. I'm like, okay, what else do you miss? I miss summer camp and having all this. I'm like, well, okay, we can't get that back. Sure. You know, but it was just yeah. asking her, but it was powerful for her to name mm -hmm. what the ache in her heart. Mm -hmm. But it was, and I just received her. And so she's like, what do we do now? I'm like, you just grieve. You yeah. just grieve because yeah. you miss it. Mm. And I'll be here with you. But it was like, I, I mean, I was just, one, I was like, I showed up differently. Yeah. Because I had shown up differently for myself, mm -hmm. so then I could show up differently for her. Totally. And I didn't push her through, which mm -hmm. I would have totally done, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you also didn't say, look on the bright side. Yes. Yeah, or just Because we it, do saying, that, yeah. which is, yeah. yes. yes, it's important. Yeah. You don't want to wallow in a hole. Like, no. yes. But this grieving part is, is so important, and you've lived that, too. Yes. You've let yourself grieve some things and realize mm -hmm. there's actually beauty that comes from grieving. Well, resurrection comes out of the grief, yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah. going, th going through the whole process of Holy Saturday, yeah. you know, going yeah. through the whole process, not pushing mm -hmm. through it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I think there's something I just was coming to me as we were talking and I was thinking about my husband in particular and how there's been, you know, at times just a lot of ways that we missed each other, like in loving each other. And I can speak for myself, like ways that I feel like he hasn't loved me well or in the way that I needed. And it's very easy for me. My default is to just close up and wall up and be like, yeah. well, then I don't need you. Yes. If, if you aren't going to show up for me in the way that I need, yeah. then I just won't need you. Yes. You know, like that's something I have to always be really, really careful of. And I'm constantly trying to like pull myself back into yeah. the, like to re-engage, Heather, re-engage, like don't yes. stay far away. So I think too, like Jake has grown so much, like as I've been more vulnerable with him about what I need, mm -hmm. which is excruciatingly hard for me. <laughs> and yeah. he then he's responding better in the way that I need. Then, you know, like I it's like we have to allow each other to grow, mm -hmm. like to recognize oh, that yes. like in the past I may have been hurt by this person or they may have been dismissive or they may have whatever it might be. You fill in the blank. But to just know like people are they're, they can change and there's maturity yeah. occurring in them too. Like oh I can goodness. think about things that I did five years ago. I'm like, 
<laughs> you know, yeah. you know, and I'm like, well, I've grown from that, you know, and I hope that people are willing to give me another chance and, yeah. and vice versa. Like I have to be willing to accept that myself and notice, like I can't Amen. shut down my heart to people forever because so I've true. been hurt or because they didn't get it right. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like, am I canceling them out? Like we're so big oh, on gosh, like, yes. I don't believe in the cancel culture, but like, I think a lot of us do that with yeah. people. Oh, we're absolutely. like, actually, I'm not going to say it, but out. I'm like, yep. I mm-hmm. just don't need you anymore. Yes. I'm just not going to give you space to even talk to that part of me anymore Mm -hmm. and so I think that's something I'm learning a lot about in this last couple years in particular but Mm -hmm. to keep my heart open Mm -hmm. and allow people to grow Mm -hmm. as Mm -hmm. as well as myself Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah keeping our hearts open that's the key to everything isn't it Mm -hmm. yeah oh my gosh well, friends, I don't know, as you listen, maybe there are some things that come to your heart, too, about areas of your own life, of, of being seen, known, and loved. And just as, you know, we've all shared different things, whatever the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, and just want to invite you just to be very present uh, to those places and maybe to journal about it and, of course, to spend time with the Lord about it. And there's some good friends in your life to really maybe start talking about some of those things or taking a risk, you know, like allowing people to go or being attentive to people's hearts. And, and we've all missed the mark. Many times in Mm -hmm. our life, we've all, and Mm -hmm. and it's never too late to come back around and say, you know what, I'm sorry. Like, I missed your heart there. Can we try again? Mm -hmm. Can we try again? Yeah, and to also take time to just sit before the Lord, like especially Mm -hmm. in his Eucharistic presence in a Mm -hmm. church, even if the tabernacle is closed, you know, but to let him see you, like to just sit there in the gaze of God and let let the gaze of God heal. Amen. Yeah, Mm -hmm. to behold and be held. Yeah. Yeah. And like Sister said, also go outside of yourself and to be able to reach out to someone this week and say, yeah. hey, I really noticed about this about you. Yes. I wanted to affirm that in you. Mm-hmm. I really, you know, you know, I really yeah. saw you in this situation mm-hmm. to go mm-hmm. out of yourself and be intentional with someone else, mm-hmm. someone in your life that you're journeying with and make a conscious effort to verbalize that to mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Because I think a lot of times we assume, oh, they just know that. They yeah, know how I feel true. about them, mm-hmm. you know, but no, I think there's some power and actually the affirmation, verbalizing the affirmation of who people mm-hmm. are in your life. And I think uh, being willing to affirm another, it really puts us in a position of linking arms, yes. you know, yeah. because mm-hmm. there's not a competition mm-hmm. or there's not the, well, I don't want to build you up because it might detract Absolutely. from me yes. or diminish yeah. me. Like to, to freely, love is, freely love is a gift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. Amen, ladies. That's good stuff. We should have like a podcast about this or something. Um, you're like, good stuff. Like Smart. Uh-huh. <laughs> I see what you did there. That was very nice. Good. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> we could do this all day, folks. Okay, all right. Seriously. <laughs> we'll be here all day. And, uh, Don't forget to keep your We actually will. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, Michelle, what's your one thing for the week? My one thing for the week is actually this summer I had the beautiful opportunity to be with some of the Sisters of Life, and I had never met oh, any of them. I mean, lovely. I had known Sister Bethany. I think I met her when she was a teenager, so I knew Sister Bethany, who's oh. lovely. Mm-hmm. Sister Bethany Madonna is just so lovely. But I had never been around them as a whole because they're not anywhere yeah. where mm-hmm. I have been. And so I had the beautiful chance to be with Sister Mary Elizabeth and Sister Mary Gabriel and a lot so of the nice. Sisters of Life. <clears throat> but I have really been praying their litany of trust. Mm, and so I think that is a great one when you are um, really – praying through the seen, known, and loved part of your mm-hmm. daughterhood because we are trusting in God's goodness. Mm-hmm. And the very core is that God is good and he created me out of goodness. Mm-hmm. And so that is a, just a beautiful prayer to pray. So my one thing is the litany of trust and the sisters of life. Good yeah. one. And Heather, what is your one thing? My one thing has been my one thing before, but it's more specific this time. So Restore the Glory podcast oh, with yes. the very cute Jake Kim, yeah. and my husband, and Dr. <laughs> Bob Schutz. Um, they have a podcast. So, you know, they're both therapists or Bob yes. was a therapist for 40 years. And so they're just like coming with a wealth of wisdom, yeah. talk about different topics. But they did a series called Healing and Marriage. Mm. And there was a couple of interviews in there and just some other things. So Chris Stefanik and his wife, Natalie, Mm -hmm. they were interviewed and it was gold. Like it was so good and so beautiful. And their vulnerability was so beautiful. Jake and I did an interview and there's a few others that I just thought, you know, like for people who are married and have struggles and I just thought this is hope. Yeah. Like these are stories of hope and that healing can occur. So you want to check that out. RestoreTheGloryPodcast.com is where you can find all that. And it'll be in our show notes, sister. Yeah. Well, you and Jake That's also good. had an episode on that too, which I think will be really healing for people as we well. We did. Yeah. yeah. Which I yeah, think we shared some really painful parts of our story, yeah. but just like God's restoration in that too. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I think for my one thing this week, it's not so much a one thing as I, I just would like to pay tribute to one of our dear sisters who passed away very suddenly, oh, yeah. um, Sister Maria of Merciful Love. 
and she was 35 years old and she died very mm-hmm. suddenly in Belize um, a few weeks ago. And just the, you talk about somebody who just shined with love. And I can honestly say that, you know, oh my gosh, just radiating. such a beautiful, yes. beautiful sister, beautiful daughter. And the tribute that was poured out to her after she passed away was just stunning to see how many people young and old just came forward mm-hmm. and just affirmed her goodness, affirmed her loveliness, just affirmed her kindness and love mm. for the Lord. And it was such an inspiration and, um, we will dearly miss her. Um, but we just have already asking for our intercession to help us. So we, yeah. sister Marie, we love you very much and we will always pray for you. We ask that you pray for us also. So mm-hmm. yeah, Amen. she's really lovely. So, mm. well, friends, you are seen, known and loved and we love you and we are glad you're here with us. And until next week, we'll be inviting together. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. <laughs>